-hmm. Can I use a footnote? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, Bilky, I that had that moment. in my shoe every day. <laughs> Bilky, I watched your reading challenge again. One of the weirdest, greatest reading challenges. What was going through your mind during that time? So I'm not good at reading. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at telling the truth, but I'm not good at reading. And there's a pageant called Duval pageant system. I, when I go back to pageantry, I'm going back to Continental, and I'm going back to Duval. Duval is now, if you go back to Duval, when all the girls are wearing yellow in presentation, they will read in presentation to other girls. And so it was all rhythms, uh, riddles and rhymes. And so I said, you know what? Nobody may not get this, but I'm going to do riddles and rhymes for everything. Um, and so that's what I did. <laughs> you made RuPaul laugh. That's the, the most time. important thing. Cause I, you know, I I don't really read. Like it ain't in my my nature to just read. You know, mm -hmm. I like to have fun. Yeah. Cause I try to keep it light and airy. Now you had a couple li major lip syncs. I mean, you beat Nina West. You sent Nina West home. On my worst day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so disappointed. I thought I was gonna go home that mm. day. Like people don't realize that they say I robbed Nina. I ain't robbed Nina. First of all, I can't rob nobody. Cause I was given the opportunity. Oh hello. Um. That day, I wasn't expecting to lip sync against her. I mm. thought it was going to be easy. Mm. So I had them pumped up my mind like, bitch, even, I ain't going to let Miss Evie wear me out. They may send me home, but they ain't going to send me home without a fight. You know, I done pumped up my mind. And then the moment, you could tell, the moment they said, Nina West, you lip sync, that's when I started crying. Because I was just like, oh, Lord, there's too many ethnic girls in the top. They trying to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what was going on through my right. mind, that whole lip sync. And I, every time I was trying, I was exhausted, like mentally, physically, and emotionally. Because when those girls came back, they came back to attack me. They ain't show how, they ain't show a, a quarter, 10% of what them, they ain't, that's only like 10% of what they showed of those girls. Those girls came back and terrorized me. And like, even in Untuck, they terrorized me to the point where I was in my, my mirror in my own zone, and them girls was on the couch reading me. Mm. Like, it, I didn't understand like why those girls had so much hate for me, and they didn't even know me. That was all the way from episode one, didn't even know me, and they bullied me the whole time. So, yes, they bullied me. What y'all gonna do for, about them bullying me now, honey? They could tell the story, but um, I just went through, and it was so crazy because First of all, No Scrub is not really a lip sync song. Yeah. It's more of a vibe song. Uh -huh. And I was trying to get into it, but then in my mind, I was just like, bitch, you going home? It was the end of the day. That was, uh, what, a Thursday? It was like, you do your interviews on Friday. They send you home Friday. You get your little Uber, hit it to the back of your apartments, go home. You're supposed to be home on Wednesday. I had, like, literally while the, while the uh, lip sync is going on, that's what was going on in my mind. You like, were falling a try, I was trying to figure out how I was going to get home if nobody could know. Wow. And it, it, it tell like I was trying, but it didn't work that way. I'm glad I stayed. Yeah, and you made it to the finale. But the, the crazy thing is, because people are like, Silky's a horrible lip syncer. I was on every team that won a dance lip sync challenge. I won Oprah, Olympic challenge, uh, but like I, I was on the well, all the dance challenges, I was winning. Like I was always on the winning team. Now was that Nina West won the moment where RuPaul said "meh" at the end? She won it, but I got the hate from it. Yeah. Right. I, like yeah. I got the hate. Like yeah. People started saying "silky nut meh ganache." Uh huh. Like it was like I got the hate from it, but they loved her. But I guess rightfully so because they show her in a way. Um, I don't know. They showed her confessionals. They showed her through her confessionals. Right. And she had good confessionals. No shade to her. Like, I love the girl to death, but that's how they show her. And they showed me for entertainment. And I was the entertainment of the season, so. How did you feel in the finale? Did you feel good coming into it? Was no. it a lot of No, you felt, because you had gotten the fan, the fan reaction, which was extremely hurtful, and there was a lot of hate directed your way. Yep, at that moment, I said, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna lose, but I'm gonna look damn good going in and losing. So I spent a heavy, heavy, heavy coin on the finale, and I just said, I wanna look good, and 
Slay, because do you like, remember a wig reveal, Lady Red? Or do you remember two? Or do you remember three? Right. She went, <laughs> I yeah. didn't slay that lip sync. It, yeah. I felt like I should have worn it, or I felt like it should have been a double save, however they was going to do it. But at that point in my mind going in, I was like, no matter what I could have done that night, they were not going to move me up to the top. That's how I felt. Right. And so with that being said, I wish I would have picked Akiria. So Akiria could have been in, in the, the top two, because I knew no matter what I did that night, because y'all can't tell me, I had slayed that lip sync, the, that final one. Mm-hmm. I just watched it again last night. <laughs> oh, but the shade is, they hardly showed me. Like, you oh, had to be there. That it was exactly fair. it, right? It wasn't fair. It was very much like they had placed the camera for her. And then when you would do your antics and stuff, they would snatch away from you real fast. I, oh, I paid attention. Yeah. They snatch away real fast so we would get the ending of your reveal and not the actual reveal. Which is f***ed up in all uh, parts mm -hmm. of filming. Yeah, but it's okay. Things happen for a reason. Like, that wasn't my moment. And, like, now that Brooklyn's a judge, like, they needed Brooklyn to go up. Not saying that that was the reason why. She did a wonderful job in yeah. the lip sync, too. Um, but it was the lip sync of the night, like, hands down. That was the lip sync that got everybody on their feet. Um, so they should have like, let me go on to the end if I could have gabbed them for that final lip sync. But... It is what it is. Things happen for a reason. I'm a person that believes what God has for me is for me. And being the winner of season 11 was not for me. Because the reality of it, with the amount of hate that I got to be the winner, I can possibly be like Tyra Sanchez right now, where I hate drag and just put it away. Um, because I would have had like an expectation that no other winner would have had. Yeah. Well, Silky, you served it. We, you put up with a lot of bull from the fans, though, I'll say, unfairly, and that must have been extremely difficult to go through. Um, it was, until recently. Um, what changed? The, the going to coronavirus, it made me think of things because I would respond to some of the fans when they send me hate, and I would be like, you, want, you, don't, you don't have love? And I realized that those fans that was hating me envy everything about me. So, like, the reality of it is I have my family. I always talk about my family. No matter the good, the bad, the ugly, my family's with me. In the gay community, everybody don't have that. So um, I have my career. I have multiple careers because at this point, I have drag. I can go right now, be a diversity director at any Fortune 500 company. Like, I have that. I can go be a college recruiter. I, I have multiple careers. And I'm very confident in myself. Like, I showed my naked ass on episode two. Like, you did. I, this is my body, and I don't give a damn. And I realized that people hated me because I was everything they only aspired to be. And so during coronavirus, I unblocked 12,000 people. And I said, if I'm going to forgive y'all, um, if I want to have true forgiveness within myself, and move on from that and not hold on, I have to forgive y'all. And I unblocked 12,000 people from um, Instagram. Wow. And I said, y'all all can have it. You can follow me or not. But the reality of it is, you're going to always come to me. Because um, when Silky Snack Shack came out, it was good, good, good. But the moment it blew up, I had all the haters. And at the beginning, I was like, damn, why do I have so many haters? But then I started looking at them numbers, and I was like, Damn, my, my views are going way up with the haters. So the haters play an important part with me. So y'all can hate on me. I ain't going to block you. I'm going to sit up there and let you have. A true queen, Lady Red. The haters cannot stop a true queen like you, Silky Nutmeg. Good night. They can't stop me. I'm, I'm always going to be there. Like, That's right. <laughs> I'm always going to show up. The producers and Aaron and Network know, know what I've been doing and what I offer and what I give. So... No, like, you think I'm, y'all don't really pay the rent? And let me tell you, <laughs> this is the gaggery. It was this one time, this lady, I was doing a pride in Pennsylvania. I think it's called Lehi Valley Pride. It was me and Akira. We done did the pride, we doing the meet and greet. And I got merch, you know, at the table, they selling it. This one lady came up to me and she was telling me, I don't like you because this, that, and the other. And the whole time, I never stopped her because I was gay. 
the bitch is letting me have it, but the bitch got about a hundred dollars of my merch in her hand. <laughs> so I'm like, I was like, Akira, you see this shit? <laughs> she going off. And at the end, she was like, sign this for me. And then she said to me, you're the first person that just let me go in and tell my frustrations with you to your face. And I said, girl, I'm glad you got it out. And from that, she came to New York Drag Com, her whole family. Uh -huh. Mind you, everybody got to spend $30 to come meet me. She had four or five people that had no spent the money. So I had to realize, like, child, let these people have their moments. Like, I'm having mine. I'm living my moment. So if it take you to say, F you, bitch, that's the reason why <laughs> right. I, I, hold, I used to do attitude checks. Like, right. it's an old school thing. I didn't create that. But the reason I would say it, like, at my Sunday brunches is because attitude check, F you, bitch. Get all your frustrations out at the beginning of the week when you say, F you, bitch, to me. Get all your frustrations out. Get all your anger out at me, because I can take it. I'm a drag queen living my life, like, living carefree. So that's what the reason I, I would say that, you know. So if, if I need to be your puncher bag to any of you out there, because the reality of it is um, you have your, your favorites, but your favorites ain't books. <laughs> Bloop. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been booked all year. I've been blessed all year, even during the quarantine. I've been um, having little gigs here, there, and the other. So I'm truly blessed. And child, they want to hate on me, just go on and hate on me. Because the reality of it is, the, the haters, the ones that don't follow me, be the first one to look at my stuff. Mm -hmm. The first Silky, one. Silky, we love you. Right, Lady Rat? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the studio, <laughs> Silky, not making eyes. It's just us clapping because of coronavirus. <laughs> Silky, we, we love you. And sweetie, you've turned it so fiercely today that you have snatched a trophy, sweetie! Yay! But I have to leave it here in the desk and you can look at it through the plexiglass. <laughs> what a Lysol, honey. Lysol to throw it over here, chair. <laughs> and Silky, it's again coronavirus, but that doesn't mean we're not gonna give you a lap dance. Silky, get ready for your virtual lap dance. Hit it! You go, Silky. It's oh. Mr. Randy Boo. He's oh. working it. <laughs> He's giving it. Silky is <laughs> underwhelmed by this lap dance. <laughs> <laughs> this is Silky and says, cut. No lap dance for me. I do not want this lap I dance. Uh-uh. <laughs> so you should have sent him over. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like y'all playing with me. I done told y'all they had no since Thanksgiving. Y'all want to. What is that? What well, is that's that? Mr. Randy Boo. Let's see it again. <laughs> He's trying to give it to you good. Oh, there he is. Ah, uh, he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah, still... wait a minute, tap out. Cut it, cut it. Lady <laughs> Rap's gonna take us out with some black lady screaming. Hey, <laughs> 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 Queen. Hey, Queen. Hey, Queen. Hey, Queen. Hey, Queen. Oh, Suki ain't going for it. Hey, Queen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Baby>. <laughs> Silky, we love you. Thank you for being here. You're the greatest, Silky. We love you. Yeah, he was trying so hard. Y'all need to open back up the balls before they get back on the poles, bitch. He got stiff over quarantine. Oh, all right. Well, thank you to Silky. Thank you to Lady Red. And thanks to all of you at home. We'll see you next time on Hey Queen. Bye, baby. You're welcome.